Hey you guys, welcome back to another video. Thank you for being on my channel today. Today I am going to be talking about one of the most requested topics that I get from you guys, which is apparently some of you are really, really interested in becoming actors in a professional setting. So I'm gonna be giving you my best advice and my tips on how to do that. I'm just gonna start out this video first off by giving you a little life update. If my video quality looks a little better, it is is thanks to my best friend Cameron Jones also known as the face of Goal Guys which is an awesome YouTube channel that you guys should check out I've been doing a lot of collaborating here in Vancouver which most of you guys know from my Instagram and my Insta stories so Cameron and I have been doing some photo shoots and he, lots of new adventures and some paddle boarding absolutely in love with this place it's a really good moment in my life so shout out to Goal Guys, go follow them on Twitter, Facebook, and make sure to subscribe to their YouTube channel. So getting right into acting as a profession. This is a really tough um, <laughs> topic to tackle just in like a five to 10 minute video. So if you have specific questions, if you wanna give me a little bit of background about where you're at in your career, whether you're just starting, whether you're new and you're just working in the indie markets or whether you're, I mean, in there and you're working union gigs, comment below and give me a little context of your situation and I'd be happy to respond to those. I'm a firm believer in, Kevin Spacey calls it sending the elevator back down. Uh, Denzel Washington calls it uh, just teaching another one and so I'm here for you guys as a resource so send me your questions and I would be thrilled to offer an opinion and that's all I can really offer in this video is an opinion this is just one there's not a right and a wrong way to do this there's not an only way to do this it's always a combination of listening to your own instinct doing your research doing your reading um, seeking out mentors and really relying on your gut instincts. So here we go, let's dive in. The first step to becoming a professional actor is an obvious one. Do your studying. Go sign up for an acting workshop in your area. Go buy some acting theory books on Amazon. A few that I can personally suggest. One that I reread all the time is Audition by Michael Shirtliff. A fantastic book. Robert Barton has a wonderful book on acting, as well as Uta Hagen. Michael Caine wrote a great, really easy to read, simple, quick read about film acting specifically. If you aren't familiar with Stanislavski, get familiar. And I will link my suggested reading list below if that's something that you're interested in and you definitely should be interested in it if you want to be a professional actor. So go take a class, go start some reading, start some of those master classes. I just finished Kevin Spacey's uh, acting master class and it had some wonderful reminders and it's uh, very beginner friendly. And if you're like me and you're working, like it's 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 not just for beginners either. So it's 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 good for a wide wide audience. You're reading, you're taking classes, you maybe you're getting a theater degree, maybe you're going through film school. The next step that I see in the path of a about to be professional actor is you have to get an agent. So it's wonderful if you are finding auditions yourself and maybe you're doing some like local jobs, maybe you're doing local commercials, maybe you're doing like indie projects with your friends. That is phenomenal. I did tons of that. It was a really great way to avoid getting a second job. I could make, you know, enough money to get by in a small town with the money that I made from indie projects. And honestly, I enjoyed it so much. I learned so much and I was growing and I was making connections in my community. But you need an agent if you want to do this professionally. And preferably sooner than later. Hopefully from all these indie projects you have gotten footage, good looking footage for a reel and more more specifically for clips, for a drama clip, a comedy clip, a commercial clip, uh, short, short clips. You will need those to submit to your agents. If you are in the Mid-Atlantic or the Southeast like me, there are plenty of sag after a franchise agents in our area. There are plenty of agents who you can submit to. You don't need a fancy recommendation. All you need is a good looking headshot, a professional headshot, a resume, 
and those clips of footage. I will also post a link to the, the sag After franchise agents below in the description, so click on that if you're looking for an agent in our area. Atlanta is obviously the big hub right now for all the work, so I would start in Atlanta first. If you can sign with someone in Atlanta, that might be preferable. Now a little caveat there, that means that you have to be ready and willing to go to where the work is at a moment's notice. That means you're willing to go in for in-person auditions, you can drive there with essentially no notice. Maybe that means that you are able to work as a local hire, which means that they won't provide you any money for travel or food, and they won't provide a, a hotel. These are things just to keep in mind. And I know it's a lot, it's a lot to cover in this video. So again, send me your questions and I will do my best to get to them. Now you're looking to submit to an agent, you've made a short list of agents that you're interested in. It is 1 million percent essential that you follow the submission directions that are on their website. Um, it's never appropriate to call an agent and introduce yourself or email them and introduce yourself. Uh, it's very annoying to agents. They want you to follow the procedure that they post on their website. It saves their time. And following directions makes certain that you're going to be considered. So be very careful. Some of them want you to email those specific things that I mentioned, the headshot, resume, um, reel, etc. Some of them want you to send in an actual physical manila envelope paper packet, which is a hassle, but how bad do you want this? This is going to be the theme of this video. It's like, are you willing to do all this? If you're still with me, awesome. Let's keep going. Agents. It doesn't cost anything to have an agent. They make 10% commission off of your union jobs and normally up to 20% of your non-union jobs. They make a little more on the non-union jobs because they have to do more work reporting uh, taxes and withholding and, and some extra paperwork like that. Keep in contact with your agent. Let them know when you're traveling. Let them know when you're not available to do auditions. That's very important with keeping a good relationship with your agent. Turn in your tapes on time. Turn them in early. Don't say you're available for things and then not be available. That's a big no-no. Don't say that you're comfortable with certain material and then back out later. Uh, it's very important to be upfront and completely honest about whether or not you will not do horror, maybe you are not comfortable with sex scenes or nudity, anything like that, go ahead and accept that you're not comfortable with that and make sure your agent knows. And if they don't want to represent you because of that, there's nothing you can do about it. You have to follow your own moral compass and I'm sure that you will find someone who will align with you. So building rapport with your agents. That's gonna be just being reliable, dependable, showing up on time. Really simple things that are gonna go a long way. So now you've got an agent and maybe you're working a little bit but you're not working on the things that you would really, really like to be doing. I was very, so very lucky to be doing um, the shows that I got to do early on in my career. Honestly, some of the greatest actors that I know, um, like John Hamm comes to mind, they put in 10 years of hard work before they see a break like they did in like Mad Men. And you know, he was busting his butt out in LA and it's expensive to live out there. So I count myself very lucky to, to be working this early. I'm still very new to the business. So keep that in mind that you never know how long it's gonna take for you to start working consistently. It's important to evaluate your priority. Is it to be a working actor or is it to be famous? Because if you want to be famous, then that may never come and you will be disappointed and you'll be discontent in the work. If you love the work, you're happy to be doing it. Now, I understand that sometimes you're not getting the work that fulfills you and that can mean a variety of things. Maybe it's not an interesting role to you, maybe it's not an award-winning show, maybe that means that you're not making enough money to, to get by or support your family and I understand that. Hang in there. You never know when a break could come and 
and be so present in every moment and be constantly learning in every moment. Even on the worst set where maybe you're the most capable person there, there's something to be learned, there's something to take away. I found that to be very true in my life and in my experience. Even on the worst set experiences, I've come away with personal growth. Now, when you have time off in between projects, here's something that you want to keep in the back of your mind. What kind of skills are you developing? Are you working on your accents? Are you considering learning another language? Are you learning new kinds of dance? There are tons of things you can be doing when you're not working in order to make sure that you're moving in the right direction. So don't focus on the lack of work and focus on collecting a wide variety of skills that are gonna aid you when that random role pops up. I'm really putting my nose to the grindstone and I am trying to pick up French. I already speak some Spanish and it's important to me that I pick up this language for myself, it's enjoyable, and also like, you, you never know, it could come in handy as an actor, so don't let downtime be downtime. Make sure it's filled with really productive things. Being an actor is freelancing. You never know when the work is gonna come, sometimes it's gonna be so, so busy, sometimes it's gonna be so, so slow. So you've got to take control of your schedule, you've gotta prioritize your time, and make sure that you're being efficient with the time that you do have. So. All that being said, I want to encourage you to reach out and support other artists along the way. That's another really important part. We know how discouraging it can be, right? When you're not getting where you want to be or when you're not getting there fast enough. And when you're experiencing tons of rejection, which we do, we do all, all, all the time. That can be hard on some people. So make sure you're looking around and you're being aware of the needs of everyone around you. Make sure you're not so honed in on your own career that you are forgetting the humanity <laughs> in those, maybe it's your competitors, I don't know, maybe it's your friends. So reach out and support and build up and give back. You will be happier, that's so true. Well you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. I know there are things I didn't get to. I, we could talk about self-taping. Um, we could talk more about what agents expect of you, how to build that relationship. We could talk about casting directors. We could talk about in-room auditions. We could talk about, ah, LA or starting from a small town we could talk about tons of things um, if you want to talk about those things you just gotta let me know and I love your feedback because it helps me know what videos you want to see so give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it make sure you subscribe to my channel I love engaging with you guys I love hearing your thoughts and your responses to my videos thank you for being a part of this community thank you for following my career and I will see you on the next one Who is it?